This is Monika Sawyer. Welcome to Real Estate Investing for Women, where we focus on all aspects of real estate investing, including strategies, mindset, emotional mastery, money smarts, and so much more to ensure your success. If you'd like to learn my personal favorite investing strategy, just go to blissfulinvestor.com. You can also listen to this episode on the Real Estate Investing for Women podcast on iTunes. Now, let's welcome our guest. I am so excited to welcome back to the show, Rebecca Hall Greider. Rebecca specializes in highlighting experts, influencers, messengers, and events to help them reach more people around the world. She is the founder owner of Your Purpose Driven Practice creator of the Women's Empowerment Series events and TV show, creator of the Speaker Talent Search, and is an international best-selling author multiple times. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> she is also the producer and creator of Empowering Women, Transforming, Transforming Lives, which is rated number one on the Women's Channel and syndicated on multiple networks. You can find her at Your Purpose Driven Practice dot com. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Monika. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for the beautiful introduction and excited to connect with you. It's so important in these times that we make sure to stay connected and um, support one another and walk beside each other. Yeah. Oh, I love that. How you say walk beside each other, even though we're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it virtually. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. That's right. It's so funny because this is this morning that I am getting to record with several of my favorite people. And one of the things that I um, said in the last show was, it is so important who we're hanging out with because we do, you know, we hear this all the time, right? You become the, the, like the five people you spend the most time with. Um, in a time like this, your energy, your mind, your thoughts, your feelings are going to be hugely impacted by those people who you're, you're spending time with, right? Um, and so for me, it's really, really important for myself <laughs> to make sure that I'm hanging out with people that are very uplifting to me and speak a language that inspires and, and motivates me rather than pulls me down and makes me feel bad. Not that anybody has the intention of pulling each other down and making me feel bad or anybody, right? But the languaging that we use is so important. And so for me, it's very important that I'm hanging out with people that are very intentional in the languaging that they use, especially because most of my interac interaction with them, right? Listeners, my interaction with you is through my, through my voice, right? And my interaction with most of the people that I'm hanging out with is on Zoom. Languaging is so important because I don't, I get some of their energy through Zoom, but you don't really get that human contact energy through Zoom, even if you've got a face that you get to see, which is lovely, right? Um, but anyways, uh, sorry, I'm going off on these tangents, but I kind of want you guys to hear sort of what I'm thinking, what we are all thinking together to try to uplift each other, right, Rebecca? Absolutely. It's so important that we're mindful and purposeful in how we're showing up and how we're connecting and what we are choosing to echo out. Are we spending time dwelling on the things we're afraid of, the things we don't know, the things that we're concerned about and letting that take on this energy and take over? Or are we choosing to go deeper and breathe and mindfully purposely choose what we echo out, which can be love, it can be connection, it can be support. It can come from a much more grounded, place to uplift others. So we're not um, compounding the concern and fear that people have, but instead we're focusing on what is important to us and choosing to bring that forward, especially in times like this. Right. And I really love how you use the word choose so frequently because you know I'm all about choosing bliss, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it is our choice because, you know, out there we can choose to um, to decide, we can choose what we're going to pay attention to. And let me just give a really quick example. There's not a lot of cars out there on the road right now, right? Even so, as I was driving the other day to the grocery store, um, I got cut off by somebody, right? So now let's think about this. I'm on the road. There are 10 cars around me. There's one that cut me off. So where did my focus go? 
Is it on the, that stupid person just cut me off? Or is it on the nine other cars that didn't? Right? That's a really specific example. And there are these examples everywhere. There are lots of opportunities right now for us to focus on fear and what people are doing wrong and um, how scared everybody is and people are acting, you know, doing silly things, right? There's also an opportunity for us to focus on those people who are making a difference, who are being kind. So for instance, in that same grocery store lot where there are other people cutting each, off, each other off to get parking spots, there was also people helping the elderly buy groceries, helping them get their walkers over the curb, um, opening doors for one another, walking adorable dogs, right? So in our environment, there are so many places to notice the good. And what are you choosing to notice? Are you choosing to notice what's being said on the news? Are you choosing to notice the sweet dogs walking down the street? What are you choosing? Right? Absolutely. I was thinking about that traffic situation. My grandmother had a really um, beautiful approach to that. Mm -hmm. um, whenever she would get cut off or someone did something kind of crazy and scary, she would take a moment and actually pray for them. Mm -hmm. that they got to where they were going safely. They're obviously distracted or something is going on. Protect mm -hmm. them, protect the cars around them. Let them get the care that they need. Let them get to where they need to be safely and all those around them. And, and she would do that and it instantly shifted from this frustration to support, mm -hmm. to choosing. I know when I've been walking through the grocery stores and you see certain areas, there aren't things that are normally there and you can feel that tension sometimes around you in the room. And I just choose to pray and to lift others up and pray for the store and pray for the workers and all of this because it's something I can do mm -hmm. in this environment. And choosing to take one or two or several of the soup cans, but not all of them because <laughs> I want others to have things too. So I think being wise, but not letting fear drive us and choosing because we can decide how we're going to respond. We can decide what we choose to listen to even in our own minds. What type of music are mm -hmm. we listening to? What sort of shows are we listening to? I've been waking up lately with a song playing in my head every day. I wake up and I thought, wow, is that going on all night? Song singing in my head. And I'm so glad that I've been listening to the music that I've been listening to because it's peaceful. It's uplifting. It's positive messages that are echoing through my mind throughout the night if my brain is going to be singing to me, <laughs> which I thought was <laughs> so lovely. I'm so glad it's choosing to sing those types of things. So I'm being very deliberate about what I'm listening to and what I'm watching. Mm, I love that. I hadn't thought about. So I am always, whenever I play music, it is uplifting. It's just, that's a habit for me, mm -hmm. but it's a habit. I don't even pay attention to that anymore. Like if, if I start to feel a song making me feel sad or anything um, other than happy, um, I change it. And it's so funny because people will say to me, Monica, like, do you, do you allow yourself to just relax and just be ever? And yes, I do. <laughs> I'm not completely in control of my environment. But, but I have gotten in the habit of being relaxed means being uplifted for me, right? Um, and so if something's making me feel bad, that's not relaxing to me. So I just change it, right? <laughs> Exactly. We yeah. have far more choice than we realize sometimes because we go into autopilot and reactionary mode instead of really stopping and choosing how we want to be, what we want to create around us. And here's an opportunity with many of us um, almost quarantined <laughs> at home <laughs> in different parts of the world. Here's an opportunity for us to reflect, to slow down a little bit, to let ourselves catch up with ourselves. Yeah. The, auto the way you say that. And, and the automatic way we can operate sometimes has been disrupted. So now let's really purposely choose those habits we're building. What are we wanting to be? How are we wanting to process things? And I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying ignore uh, what's going on. You want to allow yourself time to process as part of catching up with yourself, but not getting caught in it so that it takes you over, really putting boundaries around it as you're processing and then choosing what matters to you, what matters to your family. And those are the things that you focus on and bring forward. So to tell, me, 
So boundaries. I love that you use this term and this is something you're really good at. And I've become surprisingly good at, I'm pleased to say, like I'm noticing now, like how that is serving me. Um, But talk to me a little bit about setting boundaries around this. Like, what does that look like for you? Well, for me, if I find, you know, I'm feeling really heavy, this is kind of all of that energy um, is getting to me a little bit because it does at times. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, it's time for a break. So I take a break. That might be walking around a room (laughs) (laughs) or inside or breathing or whatever it may be, but I give myself permission to fully listen to what's bothering me, to feel into it. But I don't let myself stay there all day. I'll give myself 15 minutes, a half hour, hour. I'll put a timer on if I don't want to be distracted looking at the clock as time up. And I just let myself be in it, go deeper, be curious, listen to what's going on, journal. Um, sometimes I'll take a, a nap or a break because I'm tired. Like I can feel the, the weight of it. I'll make me a little bit tired. I notice I'm um, taking more breaks right now mm-hmm. so that I can recenter and if I'm feeling distracted, same kind of thing. That's an indicator. I need to listen to something. Let me take a little bit of time. Do that. Take a breath and go in and listen. But then I know and I have an agreement with myself. Okay, that was your hour. If you need more time later, you can take more time later. But now we're going to shift and do these things <laughs> that are important to me to bring forward. Because otherwise, it's really easy for days just to pass by and we can be in a fog. And when we emerge from that fog, we'll notice all this time went by and it's almost like we're emerging suddenly and going, where am I? Who am I now? All of these things. Instead of really consciously allowing ourselves times to process as these things are going on, discover more about ourselves, what really matters to us, what do we want to bring, what are we always too busy to do, what's that thing um, that, you know, I've always wanted to write a book or write my story, hey, here you go, here's an opportunity (laughs) to start building some of those things that matter to you in your life now that things have shifted, and it can be 15 minutes at a time, start to weave those in, and um, find things that are positive for you that you can choose to do because when we feel trapped when we feel like we don't have power when we feel afraid it's very empowering to remember we have choice on how we spend our time how we draw boundaries if we draw boundaries Mm -hmm. with ourselves and with others and boundaries i find start a lot with ourselves and one more one more thing on boundaries i was thinking i get very passionate about boundaries i I can't tell boundaries I used to hate boundaries and I, it felt stifling and frustrating and I wanted to be free. I didn't want all that (laughs) stuff, right? But what I found is boundaries actually helped me create containers around the things that mattered to me. And if I could build my schedule with boundaries around that were almost like containers of time and energy for each of those things that mattered to me, and I could bring one of those containers or several of those containers in every day, every day, I get to put things in those containers that have boundaries around them to protect them. And I know I've got time set aside and energy for them. I can bring forward those things that matter to me. So every day I get to put time in that, that boundary in that container in that space that matters to me. And I can bring those things forward. So containers create an infrastructure that's supportive of what I want to bring forward. It's not Mm -hmm. limiting me. It's actually giving me more room to create and build what matters to me because I'm choosing what goes in those containers. I'm choosing the shape of it, the size of it, the energy level, how big of a container is this going to have today? And those are what I put the boundaries around. Wow. I love that view. Um, And you can have as many as you like. And sometimes they're pushed to the back of the shelf and sometimes the container is brought forward and it just gives you so much more flexibility um, on what you can focus on. Right? Exactly. Exactly. They make all kinds of different shapes and sizes and they can stack. They can do all different kinds (laughs) of things to build your containers, your boundaries wisely. But if you're letting others create boundaries for you, 
you're going to get pulled a lot of different directions, especially when you're in an environment together with a group of you that aren't normally in that environment 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. It's really important that you kind of look at that and you choose, uh, you pay attention to how you're interacting with each other. What are the boundaries that need to be in place so that we can all move for those things that matter to us instead of um, stepping on each other. Right. Mm, I love that. Another part of those boundaries, I think, is sort of our ability to be resourceful and creative. So when we're creating boundaries, we're also creating our way of thinking. So one of the conversations that we had um, last week was we were talking about the grocery store, right? This is on top of everybody's head because it's the place where we actually are still gathering as humans and we get to see each other interact and, and what's going on for each other. Um, and you were saying, yeah, well, all the pasta was gone. And, um, so I just decided to go buy this thing. So it's not normally what I like, but it is fine. And it's interesting to see how spoiled and set we can get. Right. Um, and, and so could you talk a little bit more about that? Cause I find that same thing, like, wow, I am spoiled rotten. Like I can have whatever I want. And then when I can't have whatever I want, I get whiny about it, right? (laughs) And instead of whining, I've had to make some choices about, I'm not going to whine about it. I'm going to be creative and resourceful and make other choices that are still supportive of me will still make me happy. So I said on another show, I bought pate rather than pasta. You know, (laughs) it was actually a really good choice, right? (laughs) But I initially got upset that I couldn't couldn't have pasta, right? So could yeah. you talk a little bit about how you're, how you're responding? Sure. I mean, it's really interesting what we take for granted. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a little bit eye-opening for me as, as I look and um, the choice that we typically have in the supermarket, not just like the different types of pasta sauces, but the brands and the ingredient, all of this. Like we have so many choices typically. And we're very um, blessed in that way, very spoiled in that way. In most parts of the world, that's not how it is. Mm-hmm. But that's something we have become accustomed to. So we have our favorite brand, we have our favorite way, and same coffee, like all different kinds of things. Like we have those brands, those things we like. And as I'm watching uh, the pasta, can't really find right now (laughs) some of these so you know rice or other things um how we start to value things a little bit differently and look at it a little bit differently and the choices that we get to make in that um i find it humbling and um also really going deeper about what it isn't that interesting how i just took that for granted so Mm -hmm. helping me feel even more blessed that we still have some of the choices that we have that we so many people are stocking up on toilet paper like that's a thing that that <laughs> people have gone so extreme on stocking up on toilet paper or paper towels or some of these things and it started with a certain type of brand and then it became every brand and now they're even in different love water they're even um, starting to issue one of this, one of that. I saw recently on an ad where you could get a disinfectant spray. And now people aren't really looking at the brands anymore. Like that went away. Now they're just mm-hmm. looking at the item. The brand, the, and it was, I think, 409 for one um, bottle of this, this disinfectant spray. If you bought two, it was $95. Wow. So it's interesting as I've seen these different measures that are going in place to help us all remember to care for each other to there there is enough we can take what we need but we don't need to be so afraid that we're getting 18 of everything um it's good to so that's i guess those are the things i'm looking at you know i'm being wise i'm making more stews and soups and that kind of thing and so things stretch a little bit further and um they're nourishing and and comforting i think in times like this having a nice warm soup but we're blessed to have that. And I think it's important to remember how much we have and that we can help another person. We can reach out and it can be with our energy. It can be giving a helping hand like you were talking about in the grocery store, Um, letting someone go ahead that has fewer items than you. Like we can still echo out these positive things. And instead of getting frustrated, disappointed, or scared because the thing you're used to being there not being there, look at what the choices are that you do have and embrace those and be grateful for them. Mm -hmm. 
<sighs> so beautiful. I just want to point out something you said, Rebecca, that you sort of glid, glided over and was so incredibly inspirational. So you said that if you buy one of these mm-hmm. um, disinfectants, it yeah. was four dollars and nine cents and if Mm -hmm. you bought two it was 95 dollars and that they're helping us to support one another and allowing us to leave things so that all of us can be provided for right yes exactly so but what does someone else think when they look at that what do a lot of us think Really? $95? Are you flipping kidding me? Like, you're making so much money off of our terror? Are you kidding? You're bad, right? That's normally what someone is going to think when they look at that price difference. They're not going to say, they're helping us to support each other. So again, this is a choice, right? We make up the thoughts in our head, you guys. We make it up. (laughs) <laughs> what yes. are we making up? <laughs> are we making up? Wow, they're supporting me to su- support. M- they're supporting me to support my community, or they're making a huge amount of money because I want two of these. What are we thinking? What are we making up? Because both are true. Both are true. And this is how we serve ourselves by choosing thoughts that are true, but are kind, and that serve us and our communities. And this is what's going to change what's happening out there, right? Is that you start making up stories that are supportive and kind, right? And I I feel the same with the water and some of these other things that it helps fear not override us, that there is enough. Mm -hmm it will be okay. Mm -hmm. And we can bring that reality forward now by the choices we're making, how we're thinking about things, how we're looking at things and being good stewards of what we have, including our energy, including our thoughts. (laughs) Um, And you know, there were, my husband and I were talking about, oh, you know what, let's go through the cupboards. Let's get creative. Like we're even making a game with this. Go with us. <laughs> and how many meals can we make it? And then the other day he goes, Rebecca, can I just have like a normal meal? No more stews, no more this. I thought this is day three. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and, and, and I laughed about it. And I said, yeah, I don't need to go to a complete extreme. We can, we can make something that you're a little more used to eating. <laughs> You know, and we did that and, and it was fine, but it's um, adjusting and making those choices and having, appreciating what we have, seeing how creative we can be. Oh, and, and here's a hot tip. <laughs> Go ahead. So I thought this was interesting. I've been looking for um, dried beans, vegetables, those types of things so that we can, because those last a while and you can stretch them and can Mm-hmm. And I haven't been able to find them anywhere. And I did find a couple places online they could get them, but again, they were limiting them. Mm-hmm. One order, two. And there were reasonable prices that people were charging, but they wouldn't let you order more than one. And I just thought, you know, isn't that, I mean, it's, that we need to have some of those boundaries in place, but by having them, it creates enough for everybody. We don't need to, to be so scared and, and afraid. And the same thing with, um, the choices of continuing to move forward, those things that matter to us, still bringing those forward. So a lot of our clients are still moving forward, the things they plan to move forward. And we're spend, we're, we're guarding it. We're putting extra energy in it. We're really supporting it. So in this type of environment, it's so important that we bring those positive things forward. But hot tip or observation, and this is a little bit more US-based because I'm not sure in other countries how it's working. But it's interesting if you go right now through the stores and the aisles, there tend to be more fresh vegetables and things. Yes. The potatoes are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the salads are gone, <laughs> but other vegetables are there. And I mentioned how I was trying to find soups and that kind of thing. So tucked among all these lovely vegetables that we could get and clean and freeze and store and use in different things. We just take those steps are there is there were all of these um, dried soup mixes 
that were there that had been overlooked because people were staying away from the vegetables for whatever reason. And, and I just thought, wow, you know, we can, we have, many of us are um, in our homes having a little bit more time on our hands in different ways than we're used to. You could use that to clean some of these vegetables to save them, to have, freeze them, to use them in different ways. And there can be some hidden gems in those areas by going into business work perhaps you haven't gone before. So that can not only be healthy where we're expanding some of the things and the variety of what we're eating, um, but there can be some things there too because um, it tends to be a way people, a place that people at least right now have been shine away from for for whatever reason so that was one of my discoveries i'm like oh how interesting and i I didn't take them all i took one of each (laughs) (laughs) i left the others yeah they're a reasonable price and all of that well and what's really interesting about the whole vegetable thing is people are so focused on what's going to last they're not paying attention to today you know what i if i buy vegetables they still last five days so for the next five days i can have fresh vegetables why am i not buying those right we're so focused on the things that we're afraid of that we're not being in the now we're not being in the opportunity of this moment we can still have fresh veggies. Hopefully we will for forever. Like I actually don't think that's going to go away. Right. But, but why are we not doing that? Why are we shying away from that? Because we're so focused on something different. We're not focused on taking care of ourselves right now. And fresh veggies are a really, really good thing for our bodies. They make us feel better. They help our immune system. They're going to give us a lot of things that will help to support us at a time like this. Right. But we're not paying attention to that. We're running to the pasta aisle or we're running, you know, we're running to these different areas that are not necessarily fresh, right? Yes. Yeah. And and being kind to ourselves and, and um, extending grace to ourselves and others, I think is really important as well because we can get caught up in that. We can, um, we're human, all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of different, can even conflicting information in the news. Then there's, um, you know, friends and families and different thoughts and different theories we all have about what's happening, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. And I think taking extra time in environments like this to be purposeful, to do those things that are supportive of us and not get caught up in the drama, not get caught up in um, all of that energy that can be so negative, but realize that it is all around you. And so be protective of yourself. That's another boundary thing. Mm -hmm. Choosing the environment that you're creating for yourself, choosing, um, you know, even like we have these screens up, like that's, that's a boundary where we're creating a container for us to connect with. So what kind of a container are we creating around ourselves? every day and around our family and think about all the senses what are we allowing in what are we feeding ourselves what are we are we sleeping are we not how can we get better sleep and when you're in a challenging environment it's important to be even more purposeful because it it could almost be like um, a battle in some ways, and you want to gear up, you want to protect yourself, you want to know this is going on in the world, but here's where I stand. Mm -hmm. I choose to take care of myself, I choose to bring this forward, I choose to dwell on the things that matter to me, that are supportive to me, and bring all those tools, including veggies, (laughs) to (laughs) to the table. To it. so we don't want to be naive in this. We we don't want to pretend it's it's not happening. It is, but it doesn't need to run us. It doesn't need to drive us. We want to, I believe, take a stand in those areas that matter and do those things that are supportive to us, so that we can be who we're called to be. And it's even more important in environments like this that we choose to be our um, purposeful, mindful, bring forward those things that matter to us. Yeah. And take those stands. Because, you know, the thing is this, each person is not an island. Like each of us that is able to make choices that are supportive and loving and um, healing, we make that choice for ourselves. And then the people around us will feel the impact of that. You know, even if it's just our families, right? But one person at a time, each of us are going to impact the vibration of the communities, right? So you 
taking responsibility for that, you making those choices, it may feel like such a small thing. It may even feel selfish. It's not because it's so important. Even each of us, each of us is a seed in the sunflower, right? We're all together, right? All of those seeds in the sunflower and the seeds each of us, a seed that's healthy is another seed that's going to impact the whole sunflower, right? So be that healthy seed, not just for yourself because it feels really good, but because of all the people that you're impacting around you by doing that. One of the things that um, I'm finding is so much of what we're doing right now, because we can't be with one another, is we're listening to podcasts, right? We're listening to, to, to things. Um, our words are what we get to share on the phone. And even in Zoom, even though we can see each other's faces, we often don't, can't, we, we can't physically feel each other's energy, right? So words are a really, really important thing. And what are we hearing in the way of words? We're hearing the news. We're hearing a lot of negativity. And, um, and we're not getting the good news, right? And then we're then speaking that out, right? We're repeating what we're hearing. And what is the thing that happens with the beginning of every single conversation that I'm having is people say, so, Bonica, how are you doing? Everything is so crazy out there. Now, when you, and it's meant to be a loving and supportive question, right? But when you hear that question, how do you feel? Ladies, I want you to feel this. How do you feel when someone says, it's crazy out there? What does that do to you? To me, it makes my heart go, ah, it's crazy out there, <laughs> right? So what languaging can we use to support ourselves and the people around us that doesn't make them feel crazy? right? Doesn't make them feel like they're searching for their sanity, right? Because that's how a lot of us are feeling. And so Rebecca, I actually wanted to have this conversation with you because you're so good with words. Um, and I just wanted to have this supportive conversation for myself. Instead of saying it's crazy out there, what could we say? It's different out there. It's transmuting <laughs> out there. What kinds of words would you use? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because the conversations I've had, I, I haven't even said crazy. It's been, how are you doing? That's right. more where um, we'll talk. One thing I do like that I'm hearing almost everybody say at the end of every email and every conversation is be well, mm -hmm. stay safe. Mm -hmm. Hope you and your family are doing well. That's been added in a layer in almost every communication um, that we're having, even with people we don't know very well. I'm hearing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really beautiful, this, this caring about each other and as people. Um, I think we can also share that I'm so excited. I have a number of authors that we're working with that they've got books coming out and they're launching. We had several launch this month and they became bestsellers. And some of the conversations I've had with the authors are when somebody asks how you're doing, let them know you're excited. Yeah. It's okay and, to have really good emotions right now. Yeah. And I right? say, let them know why people are going to be encouraged and inspired that people are moving forward. They are launching things. They are bringing information to the world in a positive way and tell them why you're excited and have that conversation. I think we can start asking about what's something you're thankful for today. What is something you're celebrating? We can work those into the conversation and we ourselves can lead that. When somebody says, you know, how are you doing? If you are having a hard time, it's okay to say that. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time, but I'm also thankful for this. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this, this really hit me, but I was inspired by this. Mm -hmm. Because if we look for it, we'll find what we believe. We'll find what we look for. So let's look for those. Many of the radio shows I've tuned into and listened to, they're choosing to share out positive stories. Mm -hmm. of, of what they're seeing, of incredible ways that people are leaning and helping. I share those stories. Oh, I was really inspired by this. You know, that's a nudge. We can, we can do this. This was encouraging to me. I thought that was really creative. I think we can still find things to celebrate, to be grateful for, um, not, again, ignoring what's going on, but don't let it come inside of you and take over. Don't let it define you. 
yeah, no, choose what you're grateful for, what you're thankful for. I was looking for looking forward to our conversation today because I knew we'd get on, I knew we'd laugh just saying <laughs> hi, right? That we we have that connection, that joy in that moment. So I'm grateful for connections. I'm grateful for the opportunity we have to be able to connect and to in a real way and talk about these things and encourage one another. So there's so much we can be grateful for um, and, and not let what we don't have, what we can't control, what we're afraid of run the show. Right. And so with the craziness and, and what I've heard a lot of people say is, you know, we're, it's going to be fine. We're okay. Mm -hmm. This, this, this will pass. And how are you? How can we make this easier? Like those are some of where those conversations go. So even if somebody says it's crazy out there, you know, maybe we don't want to echo that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we you. can say, yeah, there is a lot going on out there, but you know what? This is what I realized today, or this is what I learned, or here's what I'm excited about. We have an opportunity to go deeper when there are challenging times. I was talking with someone the other day in Canada and I, we were talking about how when everything's going well and smooth and easy, um, we, it's easy mm -hmm. to it be is. positive. It's easy to bring things forward that matter to you to take those steps. When things get challenging and water in the riverbank goes down, you suddenly see rocks you didn't know were there that were actually impeding the flow. You just weren't aware of them. Mm -hmm. You become more aware of opportunities within yourself to grow. To stretch, you discover what you're made of, where you stand, and you can choose who you're becoming. And a lot of times, these difficult times are so enlightening. They give us so much information about ourselves. Like maybe we didn't realize it's easy to get caught up in the drama and have that run how we feel. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize there were things that um, we could be so afraid of. So knowing that. Who do I want to become in this? What do I want to learn? Where's my resilience? Who am I choosing to be? Am I choosing to lift others up, to share others out um, in, in a positive way? Am I going to be part of helping and leading, or am I going to be a victim and stop and freeze? Where, where are we going to be in this? We have opportunities to learn so much about ourselves and go deep. And it's so funny because in those moments, we there are so many of our default behaviors, right? Um, and we just and and we we lash out, we um, whatever it is that we do, right? Um, but we're being our default selves. And if you even afterwards, right? Like if you don't catch it in the moment. We have an opportunity afterwards to say, oh, I was that person in that situation. Is that who I want to be? Exactly. Right? What can I do differently next time when I start to feel that emotion coming up or if I start to hear those words coming out of my mouth? Can I bite my tongue? Can I take a deep breath? This is a practice, right? And we're getting lots of opportunities to practice right now. <laughs> Right? Um, to, and to show, to really discover who we are by default and who it is that we want to be and to step more powerfully into that new person that we want to be. If we allow ourselves to do that, if we allow ourselves to step forward into our most powerful selves, all of those people, that person that you're going to be, that you're becoming, will then step forward past this. Imagine what society can look like, right? We can look like so much more supportive, so much more involved with our communities, so much more passionate about our work, right? Because we have now practiced being that person. We've gone from default to conscious, right? We've gone from reactive to responding right? I always say to people that we can't control what's going out in the world. We can always control how we choose to respond. And this is our opportunity to practice that, right? Because it makes a difference. It's important. It's not just verbiage. It's not just a good idea, but I'm too busy. It's real, right? And it's necessary. 
And this is our opportunity to just really practice that over and over and over again to become our very best selves. And whenever we're learning, I was just thinking that practice um, to give ourselves grace. And, Absolutely. And, and humor, don't forget humor. Yeah. And being able to <laughs> laugh at some of the crazy things we'll do or how we reacted. And now in quarters where we're more confined with mm -hmm. more bodies than we're used to. It's almost like we have these mirrors all around ourselves mm -hmm. <laughs> that reflect back things that we can discover and we can learn about each other and about ourselves and about stronger communication and how, where, how do we cooperate and collaborate together and, and what are the things that we as un units and then connecting with other units, mm -hmm. how, what, what matters in all of that? How do we want the world to be? How do we want to start being that inside ourselves with the relationships we have, the people around us, and then with all the amazing technology we have in the world to connect, we're able to bring those connections. It's not dependent on face to, you know, in-person types of connection. Like we can have amazing connections with people around the world, lifting each other up, sharing, encouraging, inspiring, um, and, and holding space for each other when there are really hard moments in it, because there are too. Mm -hmm. And let's there hold are. space and kindness and love and choose to bring that forward. And compassion. Yeah. And I know Mahatma Gandhi says, be the change you want to see in the world, right? This is our opportunity to be that. And ladies who are listening, don't be afraid to have a good day. We kind of skimmed over that, right? We yeah. think that compassion is having our voice low and saying, how are you? And letting people vent. And all of those things are good things. I'm not saying don't do them. But be okay with people having a good day and you having a good day. Because as your energy is higher, people might get annoyed, actually, right? But they also might be uplifted by it. You may change the conversation. You may change the energy in that room, right? It's okay to be happy, to have a good day, to be experiencing bliss somewhere and somehow. That's the challenge right now. And if you can do it and if you can live it, then you can model that also, right? So don't be afraid of that. Don't, be, don't think that having compassion means that you have to stay really grounded and you know, you can be excited, you can be passionate, you can be moving forward, you can be all of those things too. It's great. It will help out there, right? Absolutely. And it's contagious. It is. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It is. It's contagious in a good way. Let them yeah. catch your joy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I just kind of want to end it on that note. Let them catch your bliss. Let them catch your joy. Let them catch your laughter, right? Like be that person out there. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so before we end, um, Rebecca, did you have, actually, you know what? We're going to end this portion of the show. We are going to move into extra. And Rebecca has this amazing heart-centered meditation that she does before each of her shows um, and or during each of her shows the beginning. And I wanted her to share that with my audience. So in the extra portion, we're actually going to go through that really beautiful, uplifting heart uh, meditation. So those of you who are subscribed to extra, you're going to get advantage of that. And then if you're not subscribed, of course, subscribe so you can, you can take advantage of that. But before we move into extra, Rebecca, do you have anything that you'd like to leave this audience with? I just want to encourage each of you to be willing to be the light, um, be willing to share and shine the gift of who you are, because there's nobody else in the world just like you, <laughs> and you're absolutely needed, especially in a time like this, your voice, your texture, your, it's almost like we are flowers in the garden of life, and we all have our own texture, our own scent, our own fragrance, our own um, colors that we get to bring to that garden of life and if we shrink back we're still occupying the same space but the garden becomes less vibrant and we really need a vibrant garden right now in these dark times and we want to really be easy to find so when there are darker challenging times 
light has an even stronger impact. Mm -hmm. It can be seen from further away. So be willing to be that light. Be willing to shine your gifts powerfully and purposely so that it can reach everybody around the world. And then we can light up this globe. One heart, one life, one choice at a time to really bring forward and shine your gifts, your talents, your joy, and your love with the world. Thank you so much for that, Rebecca. And I'd like to leave you ladies with this. Always remember, bliss is your birthright. Choose to live your bliss every moment of every day. I'll see you next time. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to download my favorite investing strategy, just go to blissfulinvestor.com. See you next time.